Guys, what's going on? Zach here, ZachEvnish.com, Q&A time. It's the easiest way for me to get to these questions and actually be thorough about it. This question comes from a high school wrestler, and uh, whether you're a high school wrestler or not, doesn't matter. I want you to pay attention to his questions, pay attention to the advices I give him on training, training equipment, and uh, apply it to wherever you are. Success leaves clues. So this kid's name is John, kind of gave me a bit of a story about how he's got some very strong work ethic. Um, and then he came, you know, got injured and he said that injury, you know, messed him up a little bit, but he's fired up more so now, more than ever before. He's all healed up and uh, he's following a blend of Jim Wendler's 531 and then he does conditioning or assistance work um, using a lot of the odd object stuff that I talk about. And as Jim Wendler says, if you're doing a little of 531 and a little something else, you're no longer doing 531. Um, so number one, don't don't program hop. Be very committed to the program. Otherwise, not only are you not truly following the program, but you start implementing bits and pieces of other programs, the program you're trying to follow is not going to be as effective. It's not going to deliver because now you might be canceling or pulling certain things out that are a big part of the recipe. So right now, John's following the minimalist workout program I have in um, the program. It's called Workouts That Win, workoutsthatwin.com. He goes, I love it. Now, I want to say this, John. Number one, the minimalist program is really strategically organized for in-season training. When you're training, you know, two, two and a half hours a day wrestling, plus you've got two matches a week on average, maybe a tournament every month, that could be one or two days. You don't have the energy or the time to be putting in a three, four day week, um, you know, GPP, strength and conditioning program. So here's the answers to your questions. You're saying that you're alone in this training program. None of your friends are dedicated. And you said it's hard to push yourself, but the motivational, my motivational YouTube has helped. So John, find guys that maybe aren't wrestlers and train with them. Any training partner is going to help you get better and you help him or her get better. Find people in the gym, at the local gym that are getting after it and train with them even just once a week. That's 100% more than zero. Now, for the technicalities of your program, you're asking, do I recommend high bar or low bar and that you've trained both? When I uh, coach the squat, we put the bar right in the middle of the trap. So we don't do a low bar squat, but... Here and there, here and there, I've had athletes that just naturally gravitate to that low bar position, and if they're moving well, I don't try to pull them out of it. Uh, we do, however, use a variety of squats from the you know, straight bar to the safety bar to zercher squats, front squats, box squats, sandbag squats, kettlebell squats. And in that you know, tree of different you know, squat variations, we use variations with the kettlebells, with the sandbag, Pausing, no pausing, different depth to the squat. So a lot of variations. Um, and then you're saying, what are the tips or advice for the minimalist workouts that win? What things should I add? Then you're saying you don't have sleds, you don't have sandbags, you don't have a rope to climb or a training partner, but you have kettlebells. Here is a big thing, John, and I say this to other people as well. This is where I, I mentioned success leaves clues. Make your own sandbag. I was doing this. In fact, I remember one of the first wrestlers that started communicating with me on the regular. He was a sophomore. And he was telling me how he would go to the local new home construction sites when all the contractors would leave. And he'd carry around cinder blocks and sandbags. And he would lift outside at the construction sites, the new home development. I remember doing this before I even owned a gym. There were new homes being developed. I remember riding my bike back there and finding stones and doing things like 10 sets of 10 stone deadlifts, um, clean and press, carrying the stones, and just finding a way. So you're asking, what should I add? Well, there you go, my man. If you don't have a sled, make one from a tire or buy it. Uh, if you don't have a climbing rope, buy one from any of these websites or on Amazon. Things nowadays are much more affordable than they used to. Don't have a training partner? Find training partners. Organize it. So we always want... You know, so many people always want to find ways to work around the actual path, around the system. 
you know, this is akin to me saying, hey, I want to make a million dollars, but I don't have a good idea. I don't want to really do all the things that necessary. What's the other way I could do it? No, this is the path. This is what you got to do. You got to get those sleds. You got to drag sleds. You got to sprint with the sleds. Sandbags are great. They're not a necessity, but they're awesome. Carrying, squatting, clean and press, shouldering. Um, rope climbing, not a big deal if you don't have one, but if you do have one, I love it. It's one of the best upper body exercises out there. So John, find a way rather than finding an excuse. I love your work ethic. I see you're crushing it with the barbells and the kettlebells, but you got a couple pieces there that are crucial. Now, if you're going to follow 531, be a diehard 531. Workouts that win, stick to that in season when the time is limited, as well as your resources of energy. Um, for everybody else out there, if you want to achieve something, you know, we're in a world where now information is rampant, right? I could get everything for free. And what that's created is we want everything for free or for cheap. We don't want to buy anything. Give me, give me, discount me, discount me. Um, I'm, it's not convenient for me now. When I come back, can you give me that discount? The people that win... They ain't fucking waiting. They ain't coming up. They don't have, you know, plan B. They got plan A, do or die. So, John, I want you to take that because you seem like you got a bit of that killer instinct. And I want you to take that do or die attitude and go 100%. Right now, you're around 80%. And if you flip that switch, you can become unstoppable. Ultimately, it's up to you. A lot of free stuff for everybody that likes free stuff. Hitting those links below. And that's it, guys. Peace.